there's two ways to describe the river today. Number one is an urban river. It's probably one of the most populated watersheds in the state. The other way to describe it is, this is home. This is where I come from. This is where my people come from. Without a river, there isn't a people. Without a people, there isn't a river. Salmon are part of my family. Native people understood how much of an important species it is. From eagles to heron, they're all feeding on the salmon. It is the salmon that's giving that life to you. They are an icon. It's hard to think about Puget Sound without salmon. In 2019, we named the Green Duwamish one of America's most endangered rivers. And this is a call to action around rivers that are facing urgent threats. These are rivers where the public needs to take action, urge decision makers to do the right thing. American Rivers is a nationwide nonprofit focused on river protection and conservation. Flood protection measures over the years constrain this channel so that it can't move, it can't function like a river, and increased temperatures in this area are making the water so hot that it's actually lethal to salmon. Baby salmon are kind of this lost story. Once they hatch in the headwaters, they have this arduous journey moving downstream where they go through this complete transformation. They go from a, a freshwater fish about this big all the way down to the ocean. And along that journey, they need complex habitat. They need areas with low velocity and cool water that are abundant in food. Natural rivers create side channels in deep pools where they can congregate and where they can have those areas and where they're safe from predators. When you have a river that's been levied or heavily modified, you lose that complexity, you lose that floodplain habitat, and you lose those critical areas for salmon to rear. A levee is essentially a mound of earth that has been piled up next to a river, next to a floodplain area, so that people can build areas behind it. And so here in the lower green, the majority of this area has been levied over the last decades and development has come in behind it. On the Green Duwamish, we've seen a lot of outdated big levees that have really destroyed a lot of salmon habitats. We're down to 10% of, of that historic abundance. And this actually can create worse flooding because it raises the flood waters, raises the level of the river, and it threatens downstream communities because that water has to have somewhere to go. By building these levees here, you've cut off all that complexity and eliminated all of those natural processes from functioning. And you're left with, yeah, this open flat water ditch. This river used to be 15 miles and bends and all kinds of things. And when they cut the new river so that this area could be useful as an industrial area and accessed by a lot of ships. They straightened it, only five miles, so they took 10 miles of the river out. Salmon are like, like this incredibly key species in the middle of the web. It's kind of like the Jenga game where you can pull out a piece of wood and the tower still remains together. Salmon are that one thing that if you take it out, that whole thing falls apart. Rivers are remarkably resilient. They can be restored. Even after decades, even after 100 years of damage, you can bring a river back. By looking at Google Earth, we're able to see strategic locations where habitat opportunities might exist. These levees could be set back, back into the floodplain further and make these waters salmon safe again. There are so many species that rely on the salmon itself that that whole tower doesn't fall. That's why they're so important. We are connected through water. Everybody is connected through water. Where we find that water is in the rivers. I describe the creeks and the rivers very much like the veins in your hand and your arm in your chest, in your legs. We have taken advantage of these systems 
and not respected them. So we have to change that. Salmon are keystone species for the Pacific Northwest. Not only are they ingrained in the cultural legacy of this area and to indigenous communities that have lived here for thousands of years, but they really are the keystone of the entire food chain. The hope that I have for, for the ecosystem, the whole system, the estuary here, and then with that salmon is that when the Duwamish tribe has a function at the Longhouse and Cultural Center, we don't get our fish from Alaska. That we can actually say it's okay to have fish from this river. We don't do that today because we don't trust the fish here. That's gonna be a day that's really special because now the system is put back together again. And that doesn't mean that the industries have to go. The whole system can work better, and we can do a better job of it. It's our own survival that we're looking at.